Well, hi, good morning. Welcome to my shop. Thanks for joining me here. It's February 14th, and it's tough decision day for this radio. Tough decision. So I've discovered that it certainly appears, based on a number of different tests, that there's an open circuit in the IF primary coil here. That's blocking the B plus from getting to the IF2 also. So it's doing nothing. This coil is going nowhere. Can't see any evidence of where a fault might be. Uh, although I haven't examined the coil really closely, but what, what can you do about it if there's a break deep in one of these coils? What, what can you possibly do about it? So I see myself as having four options with this uh, radio. I have not invested in it yet. I haven't put any parts in it or anything. <clears throat> Just another score. It has a really poor speaker. It's in very, very bad shape. That's a big problem too. Two big problems in this radio. You could probably overcome the speaker. Yeah, and there could be other problems hidden away in here that I don't even know about yet. Not very likely, but but it's possible. So what are the options with this? So one is walk away from the radio, Jim. It's over. You got better things to do. I got other radios to work on. Uh, why sweat over this one? That's one. Number two is uh, replace it in its entirety. Uh, I don't have another radio identical to this. I don't have another IF can identical to this. I do have another radio though that I could potentially use as a donor. It's just sitting on the floor there. Um, another one is repair the coil. Um, I just don't know how to do that. I, I, I don't even know where I would start. The, the windings on these coils are very, very specifically done. I mean, this isn't in this shape for no reason. It's done like this. It affects the bandwidth, the interaction between the two coils. If you look really closely, you can even see that the wires are not just wound around, they're wound in a pattern. These are, as, as I've, I think I've said before, what are these radios? These radios are these coils. Th this is the most, I think, anyway, most proprietary part of a radio like this. This is, this is the part that it must have done a lot of experimenting, a lot of prototyping to come up with this uh, exact design. And it's very specific to this radio and pretty much no other. It's a, it's a unique part for this radio. Every, every radio is like this, more or less. I mean, there are, there are standard IF cans, especially in the 1950s, 1960s uh, radios, these, these cans start becoming quite standardized. But not in these old radios. So swapping, even if I, I don't go around the circuits there a little bit, even if I were to, to swap it with this, you can see that the can is, oh, there's a camera problem there. The can is smaller. Um, you know, I can't even ask the question, are these good? Well, they probably are. You have know, the hundreds of radios that I've worked on. There's only been, I don't even know how many, two others that have had a short in the uh, in the IF transformer, which I find really surprising. I kind of thought this was a really typical failure because the primary side's carrying the plate current. If something goes wrong with the tube, the plate current could shoot through the roof and burn the coil out. And some, some radios, they have uh, usually 1,000 ohm resistors in a position where if that kind of thing started happening, the resistor would pop. So it's like a fuse, in a sense, uh, before the coil would, would burn out. You know, this is quite a mystery, too. Th this can exactly matches this can. So this, is, this is the can from this radio. How'd it get to look like that? Was it in this way or was it in that way? I think it was in this way. Puts the burn up against this tube. Maybe that's all it was. Maybe there was originally a big glass tube in here and the glass was literally up against this. You know, I've never seen anything quite like that before. It's nothing really on the inside. That's quite mysterious. Can't, I, can't, I, can't, I can't make a story around that. That really makes sense. So what am I, and, and the other option, another option uh, is to bypass this, to, 
to forsake this part of the circuit and basically try to take the output of this uh, transformer, let it go through this tube where it's going to get amplified, and then tap it off the output of this tube to feed on into this tube, just forsake this transformer. Uh, this has serious ramifications on the operation of the radio. It's going to change. I, I believe it would change the bandwidth dramatically. Um, could I make the radio make noise <laughs> doing that? Probably. One of the problems is the, the coil here is conveying the plate current, plate voltage to this tube. The coil is open. There's no plate voltage. i got to do something about that. So I have to bring the plate voltage here probably through a resistor. I have to size the resistor right. I, I don't know how to do that stuff. I'd have to figure all that out. And after doing that, the result might be just intolerable. Another possible future for this radio, just, just looking at this, is goodbye to the radio part. I've, just, I've done this a couple of times in the <laughs> very recently where I just said, forget the radio. Uh, utilize the other functions of the uh, amplifier. Well, one of them is a console. So it's got a record player in it. Now this one you could put a Bluetooth thing here and you can play the radio. But, you know, really, don't you have another radio in your house you can play? Uh, don't you have other Bluetooth stuff? Why, why, why would anybody want to really use this radio uh, for that purpose? It's not a particularly cool looking radio. It's okay. Oh boy. So, you know, the outcome of this particular video is I, I, I may just say, well, that's the end of that, and I walk away from this radio at this point. I don't, I don't like doing that. Uh, probably attempting the bypass is probably a fairly, a relatively easy thing to do. I'd probably set up very temporary circuitry, which is a couple of parts here and there, and see what happens. Um, Perhaps the value of this radio for me is, is to do that experiment and see what happens. Uh, certainly trying to change the uh, change this with another IF can. I have had one radio similar to this one with one IF can was smaller than the other and it had been replaced. Somebody had actually done this. It had actually taken an IF can from another radio and stuck it in the radio I was working on. And the radio had some problems, if I remember right, uh, but it actually worked. It performed. Um, would somebody using it realize that it was buggered up inside? I don't think so. Uh, they would just probably attribute any problems to lousy antenna. That, that's what I do all the time. <laughs> it must be my antenna. Blame everything on the antenna. Uh, decisions, decisions. Maybe, uh, yeah, doing this bypass thing, probably not so difficult. Okay, I'm going to stop for a bit, drink a little coffee, and then I'm going to get on with doing something, maybe even just saying goodbye to this radio. Okay, I think I've got a, an order, order of operation here. I think the first thing is test the coil to prove that it is actually defective. Maybe I made a mistake. <laughs> I don't think so, but maybe it's not defective. And do another test just to verify this coil is defective. Second step, uh, examine the coil very closely and see if there isn't some wild chance that I can repair it. Now, I did repair a coil years and years ago in a radio. It was in the RF coils. It was, the, uh, it was this kind of coil here. And it was an obvious burn spot, and it was a single a single layer. It really wasn't a big deal. Um, but I should put some time into that. Okay, assuming those two things don't don't lead to a solution, then the third thing is attempt the bypass. Why attempt the bypass? Um, easy. Uh, I can undo it. It's not a big investment, and it might be interesting to try it and see what happens. I think I think that might be interesting. Replacing it, especially with the alternative I have down below, has a lot of work. Um, like one of the basic problems is how do you even fix the can so it doesn't wiggle around once you have it in here? That doesn't fit properly. It's not like the, the clips don't fit, so the can's going to be wobbly. 
uh, unless I come up with some way to, to fix it to the radio, and I don't know that I even can. I even can fix the can. So, so, so that's the deal. So the first thing is proving again that this coil is open. That's step one. Okay, I'm just going to do it with an ohmmeter because I, I have actually uh, proven this out a couple times already in a couple different ways. The, the, the lack of B plus passing through it, the failure of the radio to work at all, stuff like that. But let, let's do this again. So let's put this on ohmage here. Okay, I'm just going to unplug the radio so nothing bad can happen. Okay, now making certain I make contact with the uh, Coil here. So one one wire quite clearly is coming down to here. And the other wires got to go to the other side, and I can, other side of the capacitor I can see it. Okay, what kind of resistance would we expect here? Pretty low, thousand ohms, something like that. This is a six million ohm scale now. Now, how do I know that these wire connections to what I'm putting the test prod on haven't failed? That, in fact, coil's good, the connection right here is what has failed, and I'm just testing the bad connection without realizing it. I have to make sure I'm making contact with the conductors of the lead from the coil. Uh, the stuff is just soldered, the wire's just soldered on here, so getting onto the solder should be enough. I did that on the top. A little hard to see what's going on on the bottom here. It's exactly the same, of course. Exactly the same. So how, how could I possibly miss this? I have to be on the conductor. I think, you know, if you're going to commit yourself to something, like a lot of effort, you, doing the preliminary testing to prove things out is uh, really important. That's why, I think I've said before, if I ever went to my doctor and he said, oh, Jim, we did a blood test, you're a little off in this regard. I want you to start taking this medicine probably for the rest of your life. I'd say to him, oh yeah? We're going to repeat this test. We're going to repeat that blood test. You're not, I am not going to commit myself to a lifelong solution for a problem which, which has barely been identified. That's, that's the thing. Okay, it's dead. Step number two, close examination to see if a repair can be effected on here. It would require a wire to be right on the surface of that coil, I would think. It would have to burn right on the surface. And you know, if you just took a guess, it's, it's going to be cooler on the surface and hotter deeper down in. So the fault is likely deeper down in. Another very likely place for the fault is where the wire goes into the coil. And we'd be lucky if that's the case. I'll get my camera here. We're going to put it on maximum focus. Um, yeah, let me stop for a second. Get that set up. Okay, I've got the camera on fixed focus and as close as it can go on stuff here. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, so this is the coil.
So what I'd be looking for is a hot spot, evidence of uh, this, this probably wax that's on it that has melted away from a spot, a black spot. The wires look really big when they're up this close, don't they? And those those wires are probably individual strands. Not sure of that. that guy. Well that looks like a spot where the wire once was. So it's kind of kind of tacked to the side of the form there. And I believe all we're seeing is uh, the wire pulled off of it and now it's sitting up here. Well, the wire's interesting to look at too. Let's just stay on the coil though. So I, I do see a spot there. See a spot right? Yeah, point with my finger. That's not <laughs> that's not very good. Right here. Right. <laughs> that's what happens when you look at the camera. Oh, you know where it is. <laughs> Even though I can't point to it. Well, that does look kind of odd, doesn't it? be ideal to, to, to fix this coil. So it looks like there's a spot there. Let's keep going around. Oh. So there's a section there that looks different to me. Just a hair too big for this, is it? I'm gonna look down in between the coils, and that, that's what I was seeing. I was seeing between the coils and not realizing it. That's why it looks so different than what I was seeing. I can't, I can't. where the wire comes in. I mean, if it was broken right there, you'd think the wire would just fall off and uh, you'd stand a chance of uh, fixing it. It looks like there's some tape or something that's been laid over it. You can see it going down onto the form. So they, they've put the wire on and they've taped it. And then probably dipped this into wax. It's probably what they did. Back to that, where's that little hole? Not really visible this way. Okay, come up around a little further. If the coils are right off, then I'm free to attempt uh, aggressive repairs on it because I mean, if, it's a, if it's a write off, it's a write off. There's nothing here that's really jumping out at me. Going around again. I get a look at that black spot. Oh, I can rotate this a little bit, for crying out loud. And 
I've learned over the years that there's a basic rule here during inspection, and that is the longer you look, the more you see. And uh, so it's you know just taking time to look at it. And I've also learned that we don't see as well as we think we do. We seem to see the truth in a little tiny area we're looking at with our direct vision. And uh, yeah, see the truth, even that's debatable. Then uh, on our periphery, just a few degrees off what we're really concentrating on, a lot of that is uh, make-believe in our brains. So there could be something just just to the left of where you're actually looking and you won't really notice it. You left or right or whatever, you won't really notice it until you get your direct vision right on top of it. That's what I found. You think you're seeing a lot more than you actually are. That's, I guess that's what it comes down to. You know, we're, we're blessed with these powerful brains, you know, the most powerful processing thing in the universe, as far as anybody knows. And it's way, our brains are way more powerful than we realize. Way more powerful. I mean, have you ever sat and just really thought about how it is you can see the world, I mean, how it is you can see. Uh, I won't go into it right now, but there's, there's lots of, you know, when you stop and really think about the simplest things, they turn out to be sometimes surprisingly uh, poorly, poorly uh, understood. you know, at the deepest level. I think what people are really good at, you know, when it comes to science and stuff like that, is figuring out what things do, how they work, um, you know, what actually happens. But if you go slightly deeper than that, why is that happening? Oh, there's a lot of big question marks. Well, I'm not seeing anything here and I'm, I'm no longer concentrating as good as I should on this. Let's just examine the wire before we give up on this. The wire's going... I mean, I'm sure if, if it was broken here, it would just come off, wouldn't it? Held on just by its uh, cloth covering. got a, a splice in it. That splice is gone? What splice? Why would they have a splice? And they really originally built this radio, the, the leads were too short. Uh, like the, the form, like this, this part would be built separately from the radio and then the radio builder, the guy, people actually building the radio, it could be assembly line operation, of course. They yank this part, stick it in. What? what? The wire's too short? Why well, they would talk to the people building these things, they would say, look, you got to make a longer wire here. How did that get extended like that? Is that is that extension the problem? Is that? Oh, well, fat chance, I think, how that could be a problem. I don't know that it's an extension. You know what that is? That's the insulation worked back. That's what that is. The cloth insulation's been worked back to there. May it may have come from the uh, sub-assembly line like that. Uh, this one looks kind of similar, doesn't it? Getting nowhere here. Now, do the two claws look different? That's the one that I think is good. And that's the one that's not good. They look the same. 
Well, we got nothing out of that. We've got one more wire to look at. Right back here, actually. This one. Ow, ow, ow. I get a very stiff neck sometimes when I'm doing this kind of stuff. Old Phil. Broken right under the tape. Pull the tape off and reveal the break. Why, why would it break there? I don't think there's any reason why. Why, why would it want to fail right under the tape? It never really wanted to fail. <laughs> yeah. That's not going very well. So you put tape on it, then they soak this thing in wax. Yeah, I'm not gonna get that off. If I discover the wire's broken, I probably I'm probably a guy who broke it. Well uh, that looks a little curious. Right in the right in here. But again. I don't see a black spot. I don't see I don't see a burned open hole like why what I would. Hope to. I think it, no, I don't think we're going to get anywhere. I think I think that is over. And uh, I got such a stiff neck out of that deal. Oh my gosh! I got to go loosen up my neck now. Yeah, that didn't work. Okay, well, what's the next thing? The next thing was uh, bypass. Do the bypass. Okay, I think the best way to uh, go forward is to study the schematic a little bit. And thank you, Rory, for sending me this version. Uh, it came from uh, Pacific TV. The one I was looking at is the same diagram. It just came from a uh, radio museum, and the quality of it is much, much poorer. Let's zoom in a little bit here. Okay, so what we're talking about is this transformer, this coil primary coil appears to be open circuited because of that no DC can get through this tube is not doing anything so the solution here would be could be forsake this whole amplification here tap from the grid bring over I guess a capacitor hook it up over here could be pretty sure what would happen is detuning of this transformer. We're going to be counting on this one now. If I, if I fiddle with this circuit, including the tube, this circuit's going to go downhill. The Q of this transformer is going to go downhill. Everything's going to get much worse. It really makes sense for me to try to keep this tube amplifying, grab the output here, and bring it over to, to, to the detector circuit. Could it be as simple as I have to replace this with a resistor? Um, so we use a resistor from this line. Basically, I put a, a resistor really just in parallel across this coil. I could do it right where that capacitor is. There'd be no question of where I'm doing it. Right, right where the capacitor is that I was taking the voltage test on. That's this capacitor here. So just put a resistor across this guy of some appropriate value. And what would that be? Sometimes the schematic gives you the resistance of these coils. I don't see them here. But I would guess it's something like, I don't know, something like, I don't know, 1,000 ohms. Uh, we can look in the tube manual for the proper plate resistance for this tube and see what it says. That, that, might, that might add up. Probably won't probably leave me in a quandary. So we would put, just put in a resistor across here, 
that's going to liven up this tube. There's going to be a signal on the output. And then just tap a capacitor from here, just right over here, right to here. Hello? Hello? Well, he's arrived. <laughs> yes, Peanut? Yeah, he's asking to spend some time with me. Or food, I can't tell anymore. Probably food. Well, I think that's the plan. I think that's a simple plan. You gotta find out what size resistor to put in here. What would be the appropriate size? So I'm gonna research that a little bit. Uh, I'm not the first guy to try this. This is a this is an old time repair technique. Uh, you know, during like the Second World War, a radio like this come in the shop to be repaired, and they couldn't get parts, and they couldn't do this, so they had all these quick and dirty ways to get the radio operating again. And this is one of them. Just bridge the defective transformer. Interesting to see what happens. Uh, that should kind of do it, I think. Okay. Hey, where'd Peanut go? He took off. Okay, so my basic concern in going forward with this is uh, setting up a, a situation for this tube where the tube is actually working too hard. It's actually suffering from whatever it is I've done. And basically that will amount to excessive uh, current going through the tube, excessive plate current. And that would be from picking the wrong side, wrong size uh, resistor. Now there's something called plate resistance, which is a effective, I don't know, that's not even maybe the right word, a calculated resistance of the plate to cathode situation inside the tube. And then there's another resistance that's talked about called the load resistance. That's the one I'm interested in. So what I found out about this tube is uh, it's normal operating current is somewhere around 10 milliamps and in this radio I believe it's B plus is going to be around 250 volts but the source is around 300 the drop occurring in the resistance of this coil but this coil is not going to be in the circuit anymore so I did some simple calculation here 10 milliamps through the tube 300 volts in the power supply I want 250 at the tube so I want to knock 50 volts off with 10 milliamps a simple calculation, I get a 5,000 ohm resistor. Now somewhere in my reading, just while I was away from the shop here, I saw the suggestion that there be a 2,000 ohm resistor as the load resistance. My calculation suggests 5. So let's just think for a minute, what happens if you put too big a resistor in here? What's going to happen? Well, what's happening? My, my poor camera sometimes has trouble focusing on patterns. But prob probably what it's doing is it's, it's seeing that stuff back there. Uh, so uh, I lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, what what happens if you if you do something stupid? So if we put a great big thing in here like a fifty thousand ohm resistor, I think that's just going to knock down the plate voltage, quiet down the tube, move the operating the operating curve way over somewhere where it shouldn't be. And the result is probably going to be distortion coming out of the radio, if anything. Now, what if I go the other way and I stick a 500 ohm resistor here? Well, we're not going to develop as much voltage across it for the same signal current going through it. So we're not going to get much signal to pass on. At the same time, we're going to be allowing more current through the tube because the B plus is going to be higher. And so, so going low, uh, in, in common sense would suggest this too, going low is bad, going high, mm, inconsequential to the damage of the tube. Now, if I pick a value, let's suppose 5K turns out to be the right value. Uh, how do I know that? How, how do I know it's the right value? You have to kind of read the current through it. Read the current through it. Something I've never really attempted with these radios, and then and it is a, it is a, it, uh, a standard testing technique and that's to insert and meters in some of the circuits here. The difficulty with that of course is you have to open the circuit and put the meter in and uh, it's just very very inconvenient so I've never really done that. Sometimes there's resistors in the circuit you can measure the voltage drop on the resistors and derive the voltage from that. Hey what did I just say? What did I just say? I just said it. We put the resistor in measure the voltage across it, we'll know the current through it right away. And you know what I've got here, which I can think about utilizing? Now, I don't know. Let me get it out here. I have a, I have a resistor.
resistance box. Goes all the way on the times one, all the way from 15 ohms, all the way up to 10K, to 1,000, 15K, it just basically carries on for another loop. So there's the 10K, you know, there's the 5K. This box may not be terribly accurate. Some of the resistors are fairly high wattage, though. So we could pick a value here, pick a couple values we want to try. We put the ohm meter on the box and find out if this really is anywhere near these these numbers, so we know what we're doing. Find an appropriate place, and we can go high, low, and it's easy for me to insert an ammeter meter here. Hey, that's the ticket. That's the ticket right there. That is the way forward. We've used this box. Clip this guy now. I'm going, I'm going to be discovering is the right re uh, resistor to produce the appropriate current through the radio, not necessarily the appropriate signal to, to move on. I have to leave that for after. But the first thing is to get the, kind of the, the DC operating scenario here correct for this uh, for this uh, radio. I'm going to stop and think about this just a little bit, and then we're going to do it. Okay, step one, let's just see how true this really is. 4 .8, 4 .7. 3 .3, 4 .6. 2 .2, 2 .7. So we're good. That's a little high. This is a little lower than I'm probably going to go. I'm going to go high is what I'm going to do. So that's good. None of these are surprisingly low. That would be the risk. This is about the same as that. We go up. We got seven. And we got nine. That's pretty good. So this is a pretty good range in here. 10, 10K. Do we, would we want to go higher than that? To go higher than that, we have to go way higher and then down here. Oop, that didn't look too good, did it? Which is not so good. Okay, we'll stay away. Say 10. 9 is the best. We'll start with 9. Go down. We'll watch the current flow to decide how low to go and the voltage on the tube, too. Okay, got to set up a few meters here to read this stuff. Okay, I think I have things set up. Let's just go over it. So, connecting across this capacitor, introducing this resistor across this capacitor. I've done that by attaching the clip leads through the resistance box out, oops, through the ammeter. This is now set up to be an ammeter. I've got it into the milliamp input here. I've got this set to 600 milliamps. Boy, if 600 milliamps goes through this radio, run for the hills. That's what that would be. Uh, now on the voltage side, I've got this meter connected. I've got the ground on the chassis, and I've got the uh, the the hot. I've got the positive lead on the uh, yeah. I checked this on the tube side of the resistor. So we're looking at the plate voltage. And I did that by identifying the wires back here. So I think I got it right. If I haven't got it right, then the voltage will come up to whatever it is, and changing the resistance won't affect the uh, voltage. Now, no, oh, I got that wrong. Um, I have another opportunity here to bring the radio up slowly, very slowly, uh, voltage-wise, and uh, that might be a, that might be a pretty, pretty smart move. I'm going to put this meter over here. Okay, the power is off, so I'm going to plug in the radio. Using clip leads, there's always a chance I got trouble on the clip lead, but I'm pretty sure I don't. Let's put that like that. That way you can get your eyes on these two meters, and so can I fairly quickly. I can hide behind the camera here. Smoke and flames won't, won't get to me. Now I'm going to have to put my hand like this. Okay, that's good. And for now, I actually have the whole thing in place. So if I turn the set on, the test is going right away. We don't want to do that. I'm going to want to separate the resistor. Let me just make this a little bit secure so the leads aren't flying around. Just stick it in 
in there, stick that in there. Okay, because you know something can happen. I can start jumping around, and who knows what 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 I'll end up doing. <laughs> I want that to happen. I want, I want this to go nice and smoothly. So we'll start with this open circuited, and what we should get is zero volts, zero current, zero from the radio. We we aren't really interested in what the radio sounds like. We're just worried about the plate voltage and the amount of current going through the tube based on the resistance setting. Just the DC side of things. But initially I think it's wise to start it up with the circuit open. In other words, exactly as the radio stands now. Be no B plus voltage going to the tube. Okay, so I am going to reduce the uh, supply voltage here down quite a bit. And I'm going to introduce the dim bulb, so the first shot of power is going to be very very low and the radio uh, heaters won't even get hot enough probably to operate the radio or to make this work but it'll be good enough we can kind of get a feel for things without without risking everything and the set is turned on i'm pretty sure we'll know uh we should keep an eye on the supply voltage so let me move this guy put this like this put this like this well i'll have to grab it maybe to get a look at it. There we are. Good enough. Good enough. Okay. Power on. It's going to tell us the supply voltage as long as it's above about 50. 62. This meter showing nothing. Nothing going on there. How do we know the set is working? Because I can see the light is on. The light is on. Okay, so now with this set at 10K, assumably too high a resistance, and we'll make this connection and we'll see what happens to the B plus. We want it to come up to around this range, because this is on the 500 volt scale, so we want this up about here. If it comes in around here, we're okay. Probably going to come like this, though, because I'm supplying low voltage, 64 volts, very low. There's also no, uh, with the heaters not up and no B, strong B+, plus, the overall current draw on this radio is reduced. Why did I even bother saying that? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, here we go. Do the tap test here, watching the meter, voltmeter. Up she goes a little bit, and we saw a little bit of current here. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to hook it up. The fact that this is negative doesn't matter. I just picked, I just picked a, uh, the way I hooked up the leads. So the voltage here, we'll leave it at 500 because it's easy to understand the scale. It's 100 volts and the current flow is 2.5. My calculation was 5,000 ohms. So if I snap this, well this is 6.8, if I snap it down to the 4.7, we should get 10 and this should rise up to close to maybe 200 or something like that. Well, maybe I should jack up the voltage right now on the radio. Yeah, I should. Okay, so I'm going to do that. I'm watching the meter down here. I'm going to jack it up to around 90. Can't see what's going on over here. We're still okay. I'm not going to make it to 90. Oh yeah, okay, 90 volts. So this is putting out like 140 volts now, but it's being dropped on these light bulbs back down. So kind of a weird arrangement, but now we're looking at five milliamps, but halfway to the current that's typical in a tube like in that tube, and our voltage is 150. This radio might actually operate already. Of course, 90 is not enough. Okay, let's go higher than 90. I'm going to knock this way back. We're going to take out the dim bulbs. Nothing shorted out. Now we're going to crank it up to, let's say, 110. Okay, that's one. That's 111, 112. Okay, that's perfect. So now we have actual operating conditions. 200 volts and 10. So it's a little less than 10, wasn't it? It was like 9. 
9k so again so this might be operable in fact yeah I could use this setup and carry on the next step which is to pass the signal which supposedly is in this radio now on to the next stage with a capacitor not bad but what happens if I reduce this to where I thought it should be should we try that why not I'm gonna kick in the light bulbs for a moment jump this up down rather okay back to full power Now there could be other things going on here. For instance, in the tube now, the screen voltage may be higher than the plate voltage, which is bad news. I don't want that to be that way. The plate voltage is still hanging around 200, and I'd measure the screen voltage if I could easily. Can I do that easily? Fairly, fairly easily. We should take a look at that before I start thinking the uh, DC situation is safe and secure. So the tube socket's there. I have to find out where the screen, which pin is the screen on a 6SK7. I popped the book open one page off. 6SK7, the screen is G2 number 6, pin 6. I'm going to disconnect the voltmeter here. Is this really the voltmeter? No, that's the ammeter. Oh, the voltmeter's a problem to get to. Yeah, I got clips on clips here. Okay, we're going to try to leave the clips together. Watching the current. They're going to separate, yeah. Okay, that's not a big deal. Just don't watch yourself now, Jim. You're going to get a shock for sure if you're not careful here. Voltmeter lead free, and we want to find pin number six. We want to do it quick. Hurry, man. Tube's cooking. <laughs> so we go one, two, three, four, five. Okay, six, six. I know where six is. Six is this thing right here. So what's the voltage on the screen, Kenneth? Where'd it go? Okay, so the voltage on the screen right now with our current arrangement. 111 volts supplied to it, so no, basically a pretty normal supply voltage. The screen's running around 100, which seems a little low to me. And we know what the plate is. The plate is right. The plate, oh my god, these leads cut short here. The plate is right here. You can see the plate is 200, the screen is 100. So, okay, so we don't have the problem of the screen being too high. Now we're on the 6.8 set. 7.2, I think it's thumbs up. I think the next stage now is to actually try to pass the signal, which would... Why does that sound like it's working? Huh. Just happened to be at a spot. So, Weird things are bound to happen here. Well, you got me as to just what's going on. Some kind of oscillations kicking in at this point. There's all kinds of things that can go wrong with what I'm doing. Okay, but we are doing this for fun. So next step now would be to uh, install the capacitor. The capacitor, we want it to go from the tube side of the load resistance. Load resistance is here. The tube side of it is, I believe, this red, red one. No, 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 no. Is the black, the black lead here is the tube, the tube side. So we want to run a capacitor. Isn't that crazy? This uh, meter uh, will turn itself off even while you're using it. Oh, that doesn't make sense. Anyway, no, 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 okay, losing my mind, losing my mind here. Focus, man. 
So I want to run a capacitor now. I think what's happening here is I'm rushing at this point. I'm going to make a mistake. So I'm going to shut the radio off for now, calm myself down a little bit, and figure out how to install a capacitor on that so the signal passes. Basically, this is actually not too difficult. It has to pass into here. And this is the lead off to the volume control. If I think a capacitor and connect it to the black lead I figured out before on the resistor, which is the tube side of the resistor here. Let's put a capacitor between here and there. You know what I have for that? I have a capacitor box. I think the capacitor, you know, what do you want? You want, you want the RF to pass. So the capacitor has to be able to pass the RF into the detector. Um, I'll use a capacitor box because uh, it's uh, it's got its own clip leads. So here I have a capacitor box. Again, I don't know just how accurate these are, but uh, I did replace some of the capacitors in here. We would start with a big or a small. We start with a small. Doesn't really matter. 0.001. as I do, if there's a short, this will be alive at uh, B plus voltages, but I don't think there's a short. Why don't we take a look, because my meter is available here. Okay, so watching the meter here, nothing. That's a good sign. Well, why don't we check a few settings on that, just in case I got a shorted capacitor in here, because I think that would be unduly exciting. Watching that voltmeter, looking for it to jump up. No, it's not. Okay, so we'll go back to the 0.01. They are ready. So conceivably, on the end of this lead is the signal that wants to get to the detector. And they just connect it to there, just like that. Okay, nothing too exciting. What do we hear here? And the volume is full. <laughs> there isn't the slightest sound. Capacitor too small. Uh, just checking the plate voltage again to make sure. What 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 happened? What 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 what, what happened? Am I not checking the right thing? This should show the uh, plate voltage. What, what, what has happened? Radio's not switched on, you dork. <laughs> ah, okay. Okay. Hey, who, who called me a dork? Okay. Back on. Everything is set to go. As long as this lead's not connected, it's exactly the same thing we had before. On we go. Watching for the uh, current to build here. Okay, we're shooting through the dim bulbs. 88, this should operate. There it goes. Okay, we're gonna give it the, the, the works. Up around seven. Very good. Seven milliamps. Now, turn down the volume. In anticipation of glory. You know, now, attached to here, listening. Little sound out of the speaker there, not just clicky sounds. Okay, radio, you're working, you're going. This is your chance. This is your chance, radio. Now I'm going to hook up the antenna, which I think is not turned on down here. Do we hear anything? Oh, 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 oh. that's a very good sign. Okay, antenna's on. Wires are all over the place. Volume up. 
I think I hear a radio there. I hear something. I hear something. I'm going to go throw the switch on for here. And I'll be back in just a moment. Just leave everything on here. Okay, just had to run for 30 seconds and throw a switch. Still around 7. Everything is good. How uh, about some sound? Okay, let's tune this radio. See what happens. Oh! Well, that's an interference signal on the AM band. This radio is actually working. Excellent, excellent. Now, I'm going to change the capacitance here and increase it. And I'm thinking really a 0.01 is really what we really want. This should get, get, things should get louder as we go. Tone is changing. Ooh, that didn't sound so good, did it? <laughs> What's that? You couldn't see it, but the speaker was flapping away there. Smaller seems better. Okay, there we are. Full volume. Oh, what, 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 what happened there? Can, probably one of these switches that didn't all that good. Something happened. There's always a chance that this radio is going to suddenly become blastingly loud when I hit the mark. Now we're still operating here with... We, 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 we could go lower on this resistance. And we can see what happens here. If we hear what happens in the speaker. And we can see the smoke and flames. There we go. What happens if we go lower? Okay, so those two settings were virtually the same earlier. This next one will actually drop the resistance. Here we go. Same current, same sound, same everything. Now let's go one more. So the tubes have kind of a self-control, self-regulating capability. I don't really want to say that, but I don't know how this tube is biased. Let's tune around. Some of the loss of volume could be because of this ratty speaker up here. But uh, so now, so so what's happened is we've lost. Have we lost the stage of amplification doing this? So the transformer itself can be creating the circumstances. It, it is creating the circumstances for maximum beneficial transfer of voltage and power, mostly voltage, into the detector. When I remove the coil, the transform is completely out of the picture now. So having lost that, what I guess is gain, from the transformer and its circuit arrangement, we've ended up with a very, very weak radio here. Or is there other problems? Is this radio actually capable of working again? You know? But maybe these capacitors are killing it. Well, that's a good question. Okay, you know what? I'm going to stop at this point. Uh, enjoy my day. I had some success here of some sort. And uh, that'll give me a day to think more about this and how can we ov overcome now this problem, which is very low output. Yeah, great. Hey, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, we'll, we'll just, uh, I don't know, I don't know where we're going to end up with this radio yet. Thanks for watching. See ya.